Cotton agricultural policy is really vital to farmers in Scotland. Our largest market is the EU market and we need to be able to compete effectively on a level playing field with our competitors throughout Europe. We also in Scotland have the challenges of remoteness, geography, climate. We have some great land, some great produce and you know, some great farming products. So the support from the common agricultural policy and some of the wider aspects of the common agricultural policy help protect farm businesses from that and to help them remain viable in Scotland. The common agricultural policy is more than a policy. I think there's a tendency for us to see it as a policy because it becomes very political. It's a subject of a lot of discussion. But underpinning it, there is a legal base. It is a decision of the policy makers that's then turned into a legal base. And farmers and claimants under the schemes are entitled to expect that that legal base is properly applied. At the lower level, which are administrative decisions, there's review processes going on all the time. But there have been some interesting examples of legal challenges to these decisions. For example, the Welsh, um, Welsh Hill farmers, in fact, challenged the Welsh Government under judicial review recently in relation to this cap reform, and they were successful in that, and the Welsh Government backed down. There's been a lot of discussion about active farmer because it is the gateway in effect to making a successful claim. We have a particular challenge in Scotland that we have a large land mass and a large proportion of that is relatively unproductive in agricultural terms. So the big policy question is do you apply the benefit of that subsidy support across the whole area? Do you provide it to the more successful businesses which are very productive? Um, or do you use it to support remote areas which have additional challenges? There was a suggestion that sporting estates might go on to the negative list. So the question was really, is a sporting estate undertaking agricultural activity or not? One way that this might have been addressed if the policy decision had been that they were not undertaking sufficient agricultural activity was to put them onto the negative list. That hasn't been done and providing sporting estates do have an agricultural activity, then they will potentially uh, be eligible for payments. There's been a lot of discussion recently in the sector regarding grasslets and potato lets. The problem with that is that they're widely used in the sector, very often as part of the rotation of normal farm businesses. The question is, if you let land for potatoes, if you let land for grass, is it under your disposal? And that currently that's a bit of an unanswered question. There's no definition of disposal under the legislation, so we just don't know for sure at present. Inevitably, although we've got cap reform at the moment and we're going through this first year, land does get bought and sold, leases do come to an end, new leases get granted and sadly people die. And there are regulations within the, the cap basic acts which do allow us to deal with these kind of uh, situations. The role of the advisor and our role at Brodie's and the team that supports us to do that is to give farmers that advice and to take that weight off their shoulders to enable them to get a successful claim. Mm -hmm.